Now the fingerprints. But don't think that the G-Men deal entirely with crime. Not in this scene. For this is fingerprinting that's ordinary routine in everyday life. People record their prints and their children's, too, for protection. Citizens like John D. Rockefeller, Jr. A thousand sets like these come in each day. No connection with the criminal records. A section far removed from crime. Suppose there's a tornado. There may be lost children needing identification. Unidentified bodies are recovered in any natural disaster. Each year, 200,000 people disappear. 3,000 unknown a year are buried in potter's fields. There are amnesia cases, loss of memory. All these could be instantly identified by fingerprints which remain unchanged throughout life. Now the criminal records. Here they receive fingerprint inquiries from local police authorities at the rate of 4,000 a day. Somebody arrested somewhere. What's his record? Is he a fugitive from justice? His fingerprints are sent to the FBI. The experts conduct a search. The prints sent in are in all 10 fingers. They are searched against 10 finger records. There are more than six and a half million sets of these on file, so classified that the right one can be identified in less than three minutes. There it is. Under the magnifying glass, it matches. That man's record will be sent to the local police. He's an old offender and can't deny it. A machine can make the search. The fingerprints that we are trying to match have certain characteristics. The mechanism is adjusted accordingly. This adjustment will pick out a punch card perforated to represent the fingerprint characteristics we are looking for, a hundred times as fast as any clerk. There's the card. The punch mark corresponds to a fingerprint card in the file, so we select that one. We match it and we can't miss. Our fingers have designs of loops, whorls, and lines like a tent. No two individuals have ever been found with fingerprints exactly alike. The chance of a mistake is one in an undecillion. The figure one followed by 36 ciphers. This man is wanted for murder. The FBI Fingerprint Service identifies an average of 500 fugitives from justice a month. The service is free to the police everywhere. The police can take a 10-finger record of a prisoner, but at the scene of a crime, you may find only one print or a part of one. Here in this single fingerprint file are classified the prints of individual fingers of 15,000 dangerous criminals, bank robbers, kidnappers, racketeers. When a single finger impression is found at the scene of a crime, it's checked against these. The original clue in the Kansas City massacre and the Bremer kidnapping was a single fingerprint. Women criminals, 400,000 of them. Notorious female crooks and gangster malls more deadly than the male. The last word in completeness, the moniker file, criminal nicknames. This solves crimes. I wonder what a sweet mama cat looks like. Fingerprints. For more than 100 years, the ridge formations and patterns on our fingerprints have provided the best and most accurate measure of individual personal identities. Our prints don't change, and no two are alike. Since 1924, the FBI has been the nation's central repository for fingerprints, which arrive by the thousands each day. The Identification Division handled the massive task of categorizing and making the prints searchable. In the mid-70s, the FBI moved to digitize new and archived fingerprints to make searches easier and reduce turnaround time. It was at this time, in 1975, that Tom Bush joined the FBI as a fingerprint specialist. In 30 years, he would be put in charge of the division that manages the fingerprint database, the Criminal Justice Information Services Division. But in the early days, he pushed a mail cart filled with fingerprint cards and worked on the floor of the massive repository at FBI headquarters. It was very much a uh, production assembly line type process. So it would, the prints would be uh, classified, and then you would get the, the prints that came to that unit, and then you had to do so many an hour. And you would go search a small segment of the way the prints were classified would lead you to a drawer or a cabinet, would lead you to a cabinet, and then maybe lead you to a drawer, and then maybe lead you to a, a, a small set of prints or sometimes a larger set of prints. Loops, whorls, arches. 
skilled examiners developed methods of finding the needle in a haystack. They relied, and still do today, in some cases, on a complex formula for categorizing prints, but also on unusual traits and characteristics they spotted. And I always looked for one identifying part. You weren't looking at the whole ten fingers. I looked at the card, and I was looking for that one uh, kind of uh, abnormal, uh, abnormal fingerprint pattern or um, something that stuck out on that fingerprint. And then I would concentrate on that finger, looking for that matching abnormal uh, aspect. Then when you find it, you would pull it out, and then sometimes then you want to look closer. And they did have a little glass. I actually keep one on my desk, kind of a reminder where you come from, where you started. And you could use that with a little magnifying glass, and you would look in there, and, um, and then you, would, you could make a confirmation that that was, in fact, ident. It could take 30 to 45 days to process a fingerprint request in 1975. No small thing for a law enforcement agency that wanted to know if the person they were holding was wanted for another crime. So the system uh, was becoming um, irrelevant quite frankly, and um, fortunately people had enough foresight to recognize that, that, you know, what good is it in this day and age for me to send a fingerprint in if it's going to take um, that kind of turnaround. In 1977, as Bush left the identification division to become a special agent, prints were being digitized to accommodate the growing need. So then you fast forward to 1999, IAFIS, the new system, goes live. Uh, integrated automated fingerprint identification system and that system was built to do 62,500 fingerprints a day. Well today we have 63 million fingerprints on file and the turnaround and the system is as I think we hit a high mark uh, a couple of weeks ago of 183,000 fingerprints we processed in a day and the uh, majority of those fingerprints are back to the originating agency in uh, 10 to 12 minutes. The next generation identification system, as it is called, is in the works, a database of biometric information that still includes fingerprints, but goes even further to other unique individual characteristics. I like to say it's going to be just bigger and better and faster. It's going to be able to handle more prints. We, we envision it handling two and three hundred thousand prints a day uh, fairly routinely. You'll see the day where you will take um, photograph fingerprints, you'll take an iris scan, um, you will take uh, voice exemplars, they will be made to say maybe a standard uh, set of, of, of lines and then I believe uh, there will be even DNA will be part of this. There will be a quick capture uh, capability with DNA and a quick processing aspect of DNA. Again, all from people that are that we are authorized to uh, come into the purview of the criminal justice system. The advances won't replace reliable fingerprint data anytime soon, just supplement it. Mr. Bush, who retired March 6th as Assistant Director of the Criminal Justice Information Services Division, recalls how, as an agent on the Fugitive Squad in Washington, D.C., he could sometimes determine if a suspect his squad picked up was their man. There were times when I would look at him and say, this isn't the guy. And I remember some of the, the senior agents saying, uh, are you sure this isn't the guy? And I said, if our guy's got all loops, this guy's got all worlds. And, you know, they would look at you, give you that hard stare. But, you know, that was, you know, that was, you know, a decision point, And we, uh, we'd let the guy go. Nearly 30 years after thumbing through file cabinets looking for prints and later shepherding the FBI into the next generation of biometrics, Mr. Bush says fingerprints, still an accurate measure of individual identity, will always be a big part of his own identity. The word fingerprints to me almost is, is, is really uh, kind of the, uh, the beginning and the end. It's where I started in this uh, in this business of the FBI and it's where I'm ending up in this business of the FBI.